Hi everyone. I got this really cute t-shirt from Dr. Amy Beckley. She is the creator of the Prove Test. She sent it to me in the mail and I said, Amy, let's talk about progesterone. I put her on the spot. I said, come and join me this morning and let's talk about progesterone. So that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna come on. I'm gonna ask her all about progesterone. It's a super important hormone. It's something that everyone needs to know about, especially nowadays. We're all trying to learn more about our body. So there's Aim. I'm gonna pull her up right now and she's gonna come up live and we're just gonna chat about it and we're gonna learn more about her. It's pretty awesome that her name is Dr. Amy as well. We spell it differently. And there she is. Hi, Aim, how are you? Does that work? Yeah, you're looking great. Awesome. It was great to see you this morning. Um, I'm hearing an echo. Can you, I'm not sure where it's coming from. I'm going to just, it might be my computer here, so I'm going to close that if you want to close out the other thing. Hi, guys. We're going to talk about progesterone this morning. Can you hear me, Aim? Yeah. Okay, better? cool. Perfect. I have Dr. Amy Beckley here. She is the founder of the Proof Test. Amy, why don't you just tell us about your test, about you? Talk to us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm an infertile scientist. I dealt with infertility, um, and I realized that the cause of my infertility was just an ovulatory disorder. And that kind of um, journey of, you know, doing IVF with my first child and then having my second child naturally with just the help of good old progesterone um, led me to invent a way for women to track ovulation at home and really have more empowered conversations with their doctors. And you're not just a scientist, you're a PhD and your PhD is in hormones. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So what is progesterone? Uh, so progesterone is the hormone that's released after you ovulate. So I don't know if you guys can see my little uterus back here. So basically, when you release an egg and you ovulate, it goes down the fallopian tube and into the uterus so that it can implant. So after the egg leaves the ovary, you know, so that's, you know, your positive ovulation test is when it leaves the ovary, um, your follicle will turn into the corpus luteum, and that will then secrete progesterone that will now transform that uterine lining to be receptive to receive that embryo. And so we like to think of it as like a um, really sticky peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> and so when the embryo comes in a nice, you know, awesome uterus, it, 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 you know, implants and is healthy and it thrives. And so if you don't have enough progesterone for long enough, then you, it's really hard to support conception because the journey between the ovary and the uterus is about seven to 10 days. And so if your luteal phase and the time between ovulation and your next period is not at least about 10 days and your progesterone is not above a certain level, that can mean that you didn't ovulate properly and the environment in your uterus is not conducive to support implantation. Yeah, so for everyone who's joining us right now, I have Dr. Amy Beckley, she's creator of the Proof Test, and we're talking about everything you need to know about progesterone. She sent me this really cute t-shirt. I'm gonna show it to you, it says, got progesterone. <laughs> and so I called her up, I said, Amy, let's get on Instagram and talk about progesterone so people can learn more about how important it is. So how did you, like create this test, like why? Tell us about your personal journey and and how you knew that progesterone was a problem for you. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a scientist. I've done hormone signaling and I, you know, got married and thought, you know, having a baby would be so easy. And, you know, so I went out and bought all the things, you know, the thermometer, the ovulation test, you know, track cervical mucus, all that. Um, and I just, I didn't get pregnant. And I, um, you know, would call the, call the doctor and they said, oh, well, you have to wait 12 months or you have to wait for three losses before we'll come talk to you. And it was just so lonely and isolating because I knew something was wrong. Like I'm, I'm a scientist. I knew my body wasn't working um, properly and I wasn't conceiving, but nobody was there to kind of help me. I had to hit this arbitrary like 12 month time period. Um, and then by the time I went to the physician, I, you know, had been trying so long and they did all the testing. They did the, you know, the, the tubes were clear. The uterus was clear. Um, you know, all my blood work looked fine. And so I was diagnosed with unexplained infertility. Um, and so they basically knew, you know, there's, there's a reason you're not getting pregnant. We just don't know what it is. 
And what they told me was, um, you know, IVF was my, my best option at conception because they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And so I did it and we went through two cycles. I have a almost 10 year old because of it. So IVF hundred percent works and I definitely believe in it. Um, and, and it was, it was amazing. And then um, I went to have another child and I decided that I wanted to figure out why I wasn't conceding. I had, I put the scientist hat on and I'm like, there's gotta be a reason I'm not conceding. Let's try to figure it out. So I went back to the charts and I looked at the temperature and, you know, when I was spotting and all this stuff. And I realized that I would ovulate. I would get that beautiful ovulation, positive ovulation test. Um, and we'd have intercourse at the right time. But then my, my period would start about eight days from when that positive ovulation test was. And so I didn't think I had enough progesterone to really support that pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and had conversations with my physician and I, you know, I said, I, I don't, I don't really want to do IVF again. Um, it was just not part of my plan. Um, I wanted to try naturally. And I said, you know, I, I don't think I'm making enough progesterone. Can I just have, have more of it? You know, there's, they gave it to every single IVF patient. If it's something so simple as my body's not making enough of it, can I just have, you know, just to supplement right after ovulation? And so I did that. And then a couple cycles into it, I got pregnant and that's my daughter who's now six. So is her middle name proof? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 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 Okay. Yeah. but I imagine she knows what progesterone is at the age of six. She probably does. She's probably the only six year old yeah. I know that says yeah. progesterone, if is it right? Yeah. But my son's name is Cash and we, te we tease him. His name is Cash because it, he took all of our cash. <laughs> that's very cute. That's very yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that experience led me to think that, you know, IVF is awesome and wonderful, but if you don't need IVF and there's something else going on, I wanted to create a diagnostic that would really help people understand right. if there was something else they could do. Right. And so, so yeah, this is proof. Yeah. And tell um, us how it works. Tell us the steps that you would take to, to check your, your level. Yeah. So this is how it works. So basically... You um, use the ovulation tests, right? As soon as you get that positive test, um, it'll you count seven um, to ten days after that, and then you use proof. So remember, I talked about how you know you need a certain amount of time between when you ovulate and when the embryo in, in plants in the uterus, and so that critical period that you want your um, progesterone the highest is seven to ten days after ovulation, mm -hmm. and so that's when you would use proof. And so the cool thing about Prove is we don't actually measure progesterone. And so if you want to measure progesterone, you have to go in to, you know, get a serum draw. Mm -hmm. We measure metabolite and urine. And so we really make it easy for women to collect first morning urine, um, dip a strip, wait five minutes, or read the number of lines. So it's kind of like a pregnancy test or an ovulation test, but it measures the progesterone metabolite. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting positive results that entire window, seven to 10 days, you know you had a healthy, successful ovulation. And if you're not, then you know that your body is not ovulating properly. And that is such powerful information that you can talk to your doctor about. Mm -hmm. And you can say, what? I don't think I'm ovulating properly. You know, what can you do to help? And that just empowers a more guided conversation that can help, you know, the time you have with your doctor be way more efficient. And what about natural ways to improve progesterone? Are there other yeah. things that people can do aside from taking progesterone as a hormone? And that can make some people pretty moody and cranky. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, your hormones are linked to your diet and your lifestyle. So, you know, the more stressed out you are, the lower your progesterone, the, you know, unhealthy stuff that you eat, inflammatory foods, all those kind of things really tank your, your progesterone. Um, and so very simple simple diet and exercise changes. Like for me, I was allergic to um, uh, dairy. So I took that out and now I drink oat milk and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's and I can see a difference. Um, so some people are, you know, gluten is inflammatory. Um, and so, you know, trying to understand what makes you, um, you know, unhealthy, you know, I don't want there's no magic thing, right? <laughs> there's no like, this is what you have to do. It's what you have to do for your body. So the first thing to do is to see where you stand, take that information to your doctor and help, you know, help them 
figure it out with you. Um, one thing that I absolutely find um, harmful is when women go on Amazon and they just buy all the different fertility supplements right. and they actually take their cycle and put it out of balance. So if you have a beautiful, healthy cycle, if you go on Amazon and you buy these like fertility supplements, you can actually take your hormones and get them out of balance. And so the first step should always be test your levels, figure out where you stand. And if it's something that you can improve, then you want to work with your doctor about high quality supplements that can help you. Um, there's a lot of snake oil out there on Amazon. Um, right. So I think I just came up with a new slogan for you, not just got progesterone, like it says on my shirt, but in improve your progesterone with prove or find out how to improve your progesterone with prove or improve ovulation with prove. <laughs> uh, that's what I like. Improve ovulation with ovulation prove. With prove. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so just real quick and thank you. I know it's Sunday. So thank you for taking the time to do this with us. Thank you. Thank you. So um, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, the LH test or the OPK basal body, basal body temperature tracking, and then also the PROVE test and how your test can kind of tell us a little bit more than all these tests and in your ex personal experience with them as well. Because I think there's so many things that people can be doing out there. How does your test make a difference? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. Um, so ovulation tests, OPKs, I have a bunch of them here because I literally just tested 14 different brands um, so these measure when you are most fertile and when to have intercourse. So this is excellent for timing when you should have intercourse. Um, and it tells you when that egg is about to pop out of that ovary and, and ovulate. What it doesn't tell you is if you actually ovulated. I mean, they're called ovulation tests, but that's really not what they do. <laughs> you need to measure, you know, progesterone or PDG after ovulation to really understand the full picture. Um, you know, I tested 13 different brands, every single one of them, I had a beautiful positive LH surge. It was beautiful. They all were positive. It was great. Um, but then my luteal phase was about nine days long. I, I did proof tests. I only had one positive during the testing window. Um, my serum levels were like three or four, which is really low. Most doctors like to see above 10. Um, and so even though I had a beautiful, healthy, uh, you know, LH surge, my ovulation was not healthy. And so, you know, by empowering yourself with more knowledge about, you know, the full ovulation picture, not just, you know, when should I have intercourse, it can help you, you know, say, hey, is that intercourse actually effective? Am I ovulating properly? And, you know, what are, depending on what those answers are, you can go get the help you need sooner. Yeah. And then what can a patient tell her doctor? What should she tell them? And I think you have something coming out soon that a patient can actually send her data to her doctor. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, an app, the Prove app. It's it's in a beta version right now, so you can download it on iOS and the Android store. And basically, what it does is this: it tells a woman, okay, this is when you take your ovulation tests, and then it will read them and tell you when it's positive. As soon as it calculates the positive ovulation test, it'll tell you when to use a Prove test, and then when you get the Prove the it tells you that the whole testing window and it re reads it records it and at the end of the month it gives you this chart where it basically lines out all the different hormones and then you can share that information with your physician to help move you forward so you could be getting positive ovulation tests but then not positive prove tests um, you could be missing your you know your, your ovulation positive but still get proof tests mm -hmm. that are positive, which still means you're ovulating <laughs> Um, but it's more information to you to provide your physician and say, hey, look, I'm not ovulating or, you know what, I am ovulating. So, you know, that's not my issue. Maybe I have a block two or maybe there's a male factor. Right. So process of, of elimination or you can get your tushy checked from the very beginning and do all the five tests. And the H and tushy is hormones. So getting your doing approved test. Um, so someone has a really good question before we let you go today. Can these tests be useful? Can the proof test be useful if I'm on progesterone suppositories to see if the supplement is doing its job? Yes and no. <laughs> so, so you can use proof tests to understand when you should start your suppositories. So um, if you take progesterone at the wrong time in your cycle, you can actually prevent ovulation, which is the opposite of what you want to do. And so if you have a negative proof test and then you see a, a positive or an almost positive, it confirms that you've ovulated and you're successfully in your luteal phase, 
and can now start your supplements. Um, if you're taking a vaginal suppository, it goes from the vaginal wall to your uterus and out. And it doesn't really go into your blood, get metabolized, and then secreted in the urine so that we can see it. So, you know, if you're on vaginal suppositories and you're still getting negative proof tests, you know, we actually say once you're on vaginal suppositories, not to use proof anymore. Right. Because it's doing its job, it's working, you're just not seeing it because it's not going in the blood and metabolized to the urine. Now, if you're taking it orally or you're taking, um, you know, the progesterone oil shots, then we can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everyone responds differently. Even to vaginal, sometimes you get really high blood levels too, or serum levels. And same thing with oil. If you're using the progesterone shot, you're going to see high serum levels. So, so, but, but I agree. If you're taking progesterone, you don't necessarily need to do the proof test. It's kind of like if you've taken the trigger shot, you don't need to check ovulation because you know that you, you ovulated, assuming that that was a, a follicle that had an active egg in it. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Dr. Amy's here. We got Dr. Amy, the hormone scientist, and Dr. Amy, the fertility doctor. So it was great to have you on. Thank you for my adorable t-shirt. I think I'll walk around with it and people will just learn more about progesterone when they see me in the grocery store. You know, it's funny. I was in Denver airport and I was wearing my got progesterone shirt and this yeah. woman was like, I'm sorry, I have to ask you, do you have progesterone? <laughs> I was like, no, why? And so it turns out she was, she was carrying, um, she was doing a mock transfer for, um, she was going to be a gestational carrier for somebody. And she was going out to her appointment and she forgot her progesterone at home. And so she was like, I just need, I, I, I'm going to miss my dose. I was like, I wish I did, but I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> That's a good story. That's a really, really good story. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, Amy, thank you so much. I appreciate all you're doing. And for those of you who are watching this, Amy has a very active Facebook group for women who are trying to conceive, having trouble conceiving, using the proof test, having questions. You don't need to buy a proof test to join the group. I see it as a great, I'm in the group myself and people are very supportive in that group. And Amy is a scientist that moderates all the proof questions for people who have them. So thanks, Amy, for all you're doing. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we'll see you guys all back next time I'm here. Thanks, Aim. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.